sounds amazing. That is GOP presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy showing off some serious piano skills playing Mozart's Turkish March and posting it on his Instagram. Welcome back, everyone, to GMA3. Ramaswamy is the first ever millennial Republican uh, to run for the office of the president, entering a crowded field of GOP candidates, but that is not slowing him down. Apparently not much does. At 37 years old, the father of two holds a law degree from Yale. He's a former executive of his own pharmaceutical company and author of three books, including the New York Times bestseller, Woke Inc. And now he's adding Republican presidential candidate to his resume. Joining us now is Vivek Ramaswamy. Thank you so much good for being with us. Good to see you. When do you sleep? It's good to see you guys. You know, I, I try to find about six hours a night, you know, oh, on, on average. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Kids especially. Yeah, okay, that's so the hardest part. Actually. Let's start with some fun facts about you. We just saw you playing the piano yeah. there. You were once a nationally ranked tennis player. I still try to keep it up at best I can. So you have amassed a fortune, about half a billion dollars. That's according to the Washington Post. That's a lot of money there. As a biotech and pharmaceutical entrepreneur, what made you decide to run for the White House? So look, I think we're in the middle of a national identity crisis. I'm a parent of two sons. I think that our generation and the next generation, we are so hungry for a cause. We're hungry for purpose and meaning and identity at a time when the things that used to fill our void, faith, patriotism, hard work, family, these things have disappeared. And that leaves a vacuum in its wake. And I see an opportunity right now in our country to fill that void with the vision of what it actually means to be an American today. You talk about that as one of actually your top priorities, addressing what you call wokeism. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, actually what I talk about is wokeism is a symptom. Same thing as climate ideology, same thing as depression, anxiety. These are symptoms of that deeper lack of purpose. So wokeism is one of these new philosophies in America, relatively newer philosophies in America, that says your identity is based on the color of your skin, or your gender, or your sexuality, and that you're either an oppressor or you're oppressed based on those genetic characteristics, and that we have to correct for those injustices. People who agree or disagree with me will agree that's the definition of wokeism. The problem is it causes us to see one another on the basis of our genetics rather than on the content of our character. I think that's divisive. And I think what young people, especially who latch on to these kind of dogmas, what they're really hungry for is they're hungry for the real thing. And so instead of race and gender and sexuality and climate, I want us to start talking more about the individual, family, nation, God. I think that's a much more compelling vision of what it means to be an American rather than to say you're nothing more than the genetics you inherit on the day you're born fighting some existential battle against global climate change. I don't think that that actually satisfies our real hunger for meaning. We were just in uh, Pennsylvania about a ground state and there's a, a new Quinnipiac poll out among Pennsylvania voters that says the economy is the most important issue for the 2024 election. 28% uh, say uh, preserving democracy followed by gun violence, abortion, immigration and health care. What are your top priorities? The economy is definitely a top priority for me. I am the candidate in this race who has a clear plan for delivering economic growth. We used to grow at over 4% GDP growth. Now we're at less than 1% this year. The good news is there's an easy path to get back to four. Unlock American energy, drill, frack, burn coal, embrace nuclear. Put people back to work by stopping paying them to stay at home. That's what stops businesses from expanding today. I wanna to reform the Fed, stabilize the dollar, and a big part of my platform is to shut down much of the regulatory state that shackles businesses, including small businesses, across this country. Let's talk about a little bit of the politics involved here. There are a lot of Republicans yeah. running for president. Let's be real about that. Including former President Donald Trump, a couple weeks ago, you sent a letter to all the other GOP candidates to pledge to pardon Trump for the federal charges he's facing. Why do this? Or else to explain why was the pledge. And that's why I just think we need to be talking more openly about where we stand. That was an unprecedented moment. It is an unprecedented moment where a leader of an opposition party he's, you know, unfortunately for me, the leader in the polls right now, we have a plan to catch up there, but he's the leader of the opposition party being arrested by the president of the United States who's running against him. That's an awful precedent in our country. And I think that we don't want to become the banana republics where one politician in power uses the police state to indict his political opponent. It wasn't Biden that arrested him, though. It was the Department of Justice that did the investigation. Well, there's one executive branch in this country, 
Absolutely. The Department of Justice, the person who leads it, is appointed by the president and reports into the U.S. president. And so I think we just got to be honest about that. The U.S. president absolutely leads that executive branch. And I think it sets a really dangerous precedent in our country. That's not a slippery slope that I want to see us go down. What makes America unique is that we do have one rule of law, not someone that can actually be a political opponent that pays the price for it. All right, we're out of time, but we thank you so much for yours. Vivek Ramaswamy. Thank you. All it's right, good to good see you guys. To see you. Good to see you as well. Thank you.